Today on Larry King Now, the undefeated UFC female bantamweight champion, Ronda Rousey, on her new autobiography, My Fight, Your Fight. What we kind of started to discover while we were writing the book is with every obstacle that I ran into, there was some principle of fighting that helped me overcome it. And it started to become apparent that the principles of fighting apply to every single fight, whether it's to keep the, the lights on, to feed your kids, to start a new business, and I realized- So it's a how-to book, too? It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a how-to and autobiography at the same time. On being the most dominant athlete in the world. Well, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> you knew they were doing a story, but you didn't yeah. know it would be that title. No, I thought it was gonna be all about the whole, you know, business, the Rowdy Inc., and trying to touch on all these different, um, real, kind of unrelated businesses, but it turned into that, which I, I'm not mad at it. Plus. <laughs> um, acting really provided an escape for me when I really needed it. Did you get over that now? Did I get over what? Whatever the problem was. Yeah, I got over it. I, I made a couple movies and beat up some chicks. It makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Ronda Rousey. Sports Illustrated anointed her the world's most dominant athlete, a bronze medalist in judo during the 2008 Beijing Olympics, a professional record of 11-0, the UFC women's bantamweight champion. Her next fight is against Brazil's Beth Correa at UFC 190 in Rio de Janeiro, Saturday, August 1st. You can see her on the big screen in the film Entourage, and because she likes to stay busy, she also has her autobiography out, My Fight, Your Fight, out now. Explain the title. The title? Well, I guess what we kind of just started to discover while we were writing the book is with every obstacle that I ran into, there was some principle of fighting that helped me overcome it. And it started to become apparent that the principles of fighting apply to every single fight, whether it's to keep the, the lights on, to feed your kids, to start a new business, and I realized- So it's a how-to book, too? It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a how-to and autobiography at the same time. And yeah, so it applies to, to my fight and yours as well. Were you surprised that the Sports Illustrated are treating you as the world's most dominant athlete? Um, well, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> you knew they were doing a story, but you didn't yeah. know it would be that title. No, I thought it was gonna be all about the whole, you know, business, the Rowdy Inc. and trying to touch on all these different, um, real kind of unrelated businesses, but it turned into that, which I, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> no, and it wouldn't hurt the book either. No. <laughs> Why did you choose the profession you choose? Why? Um, I'm, I've been drawn to it. I don't know why I've always wanted to fight. I always wanted to be an athlete, but even from, from swimming, when I started doing judo, I didn't really enjoy it as much because you, all you can do is really swim faster. There's no real creativity in it. And with judo, I love that there's no right way to do anything. It's just what works. And I got to learn my whatever throws I wanted and I could put it together in any way. It was a lot of problem solving and I, I, it, I didn't have to be introspective the way I did in swimming, where you just swim and think all day. There's a lot of media coverage, I understand, the past few days saying you'd never fight Floyd Mayweather unless you were dating him. <laughs> that was a good gag. Would you fight him? I don't think it's proper for an arena full of people to gather around and cheer about a man hitting a woman. He's correct, that'll never happen. Yeah. All right, in 2011, Dana White said he'd never let girls fight, and then you came along. What changed Dana's mind? I made myself impossible to ignore. And he's a smart businessman. He's not so stubborn to a fault. And once he saw that there was an opportunity there, he jumped on it. And I, it wasn't like I was calling his office and trying to make myself unable to ignore that way. I made it so every single time he looked at the news, what was going on in MMA, he couldn't avoid my name. What was your first fight like? My first fight? Um, amateur or professional? Professional. My first professional fight, I, um, we fl flew in this girl from American Top Team, and 
I had a, a dog bite me in the foot like three days before. My roommate's pit bull bit me in the foot and I had like nine stitches in my foot. And my only thought as I like looked at my foot, I was like, oh no, my fight. And I found out a way to get it stitched up without um, getting any paperwork in, involved. So I secretly got my, my foot stitched wow. up. Yeah, I went to the weigh-ins and I found out a way to just to walk where I went limp. And the doctor had me hop on both feet. I hopped on my bad foot. I didn't make a face or anything. And then as the weigh-ins were about to start, they said, you can't wear socks, you can't wear shoes. You can only wear your, your, you know, your underwear, your shorts. And then I started freaking out because my plan was to wear socks. And the girl I was fighting came in five pounds heavy. So I was drinking all this water trying to get heavier. And I was like thinking, like, what am I gonna do? And I turned to my, my, my old fight manager and I was like, I think I drink too much water. I'm, I'm getting really paranoid. I'm taking my clothes out because you weigh naked if you're too heavy. And they're like, what? what are you talking about? She's heavy. I'm like, I'm taking my clothes. I just started taking my clothes off. And they're like, oh, wait, get a towel, get a towel. So they held up all these towels so they can't see. And nobody noticed that when I jumped on the scale, I had my back to the room and I took my socks off last and I put them on first. And um, that's how I got in. But the doctor said, you have to win this fight in one round or your stitches will burst open and everyone will know. And so I won in 26 seconds, then went to work the next morning. <laughs> in regards to future fights, if you and Chris Cyborg get in the octagon, there would be two million pay-per-view buys. Maybe. You would break a pay-per-view record. I think it definitely would. Um, I think that the, the main Is she winner... undefeated too? No, she's been armbarred before. <laughs> you don't like her? Uh, I don't like cheaters in general. How does she cheat? She takes steroids and she walks into the cage with a weapon and tries to hurt women with it when she doesn't deserve to have that advantage. When are you gonna fight? When am I gonna fight? Her. Her, whenever she makes weight. If she can make 145 pounds pumped up full of steroids, then she can get off the juice and make weight just like everybody else and fight. I don't see why I have to make exceptions for a con artist when she didn't deserve any exception at all. And now you're 11 and 0, you're going into the next fight in August? Yep. In Brazil, huh? You feel pressure? Well, I asked for it to be in Brazil. Why? Of course, the Brazilian, you're fighting a Brazilian. Oh, yes, I'm fighting a Brazilian girl, but it's gotten a little personal between me and her, and I thought Why? That, why? She yeah. fought two of my best friends already, and we did this did cute... Did she win? Yeah, we did this cute little, like, four thing, like the four horsemen in WWE. The fans started calling us the four horse women. And um, so she, every single, after she fought, Jess Mitch put four fingers up and put one finger down. The same thing with Shana, put the other finger down. And it was just really being extremely disrespectful to try and get my attention, which worked. She got my attention. So when I beat her, I was thinking, like, I want to do it in a way that will really make an example so that girls don't try and disrespect me all the time just for nothing. And um, so I thought that we were going to Rocky Four. Rocky for this chick. I want to go to her hometown and beat her there. <laughs> What's the longest fight you've had? Longest fight? Um, I think it's just over 10 minutes, maybe like 11 minutes. Oh, that yeah. must have been a rough opponent for you. Uh, uh, 10 minutes, that's an eternity with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was taking my time a little bit that day. If, if I finish you fast, that's me at my most merciful. If, if I don't like you so much, I'll make sure that you don't leave the same way you walked in. Have you been hurt? I've, I've never got a single bruise from getting hit in a fight yet. But um, when I fought Liz Carmouche, she got me in a cross face. And she bruised my eye, she cut the whole inside of my lip, she dislocated my jaw. Um, and I was pretty close to probably breaking my neck in front of everybody. And that's when I really knew how much more I want this than the other girls, because it never even occurred to me to, to give up. My mind was still racing through all my options and decision making. More with Ronda Rousey right after this. The book is Rousey. Sports Illustrated calls her the world's most dominant athlete. You can't argue with that. You write in the book about being a fighter since birth, going through tough times. What was growing up like? Well, I was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck, and I suffered from hypoxia, which is like um, being deprived of oxygen at birth, and it d delayed my speech development. Mm, I never thought that there, there was anything wrong with me. I just remember being frustrated that people wouldn't understand me. I wouldn't know exactly what I wanted to say. Like, I would say, like, microphone. 
in my mind, and then it would come out as like, <laughs> it would just make no sense. It'd be gibberish. Well, how did you get involved in judo? My mom was the first American to ever win the world championships in judo back in 1984. And when we moved from North Dakota to LA, all of her old teammates had opened up clubs of their own. And she just went to go visit, and I went and tried it out. And I remember my first day, I didn't even have a hair tie. Like, my hair was all crazy all over the place. And I was having such a ball. One of the coaches was making fun of me. Um, and he was like, oh, it's a lot more fun than swimming, isn't it, kid? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it really is. And um, yeah, six years later, I was on my first Olympic team. I just had a knack for it. Was it tough to write the book? Is this a let it all out book? Yeah, it's definitely a let it all out book, but it wasn't tough because I wrote it with my sister, who just happens to be an award-winning sports journalist. So I lucked out in that way. You were an Olympic bronze medalist in judo, as we said, but in the book you talk about one of the lowest points in your life was coming back from the games. Yeah. Why? Because the Olympians in our sport are really neglected and there's millions and millions of dollars made off, off of these athletes, but I came home with just a handshake and a boot out the door. I, my family probably spent, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get me to win an Olympic medal, and they sent me home with 10 grand and then taxed me on that 10 grand, and it paid for half of a 2005 Honda Accord. And there's no, there's no job placement for Olympians, there's no scholarships. It's just, thank you for devoting your life maybe you can drive a cab, something like that. So um, fighting never helped me get a, get a job ever except for to be a cocktail waitress in Crenshaw. So the first real money was in MMA. Yeah, but not for a while. <laughs> I know. Not for so a while. You struggled. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Sometimes I miss those days a little bit. I call it the, the simplicity of the struggle versus the complexity of success. And it was... It was hard, but it was simple. I knew exactly what I needed to do. I needed to go work this amount of hours and train these amount of hours, and I needed to pay these bills and win this fight, and that's it. Always been self-confident? Eh? No. You're very self-confident. <laughs> I come across that way? That's good. No, 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 I, no you, you, you have no doubt you're going to win every fight, right? Not at all. No. Well, that, my, my mom raised me to, to think that way. She would say, someone's got to be the best in the world. Why not you? Have you had fear in the ring? Not so much when I'm in there, but um, but yeah, I'm scared every fight. But it's not, I'm not really scared of physical harm, I'm scared of losing everything I've worked for. Because there's been so much work put in that I stand to lose it every single time I go out there and put it on the line. And I fear failure more than physical harm every single time. And. If I wasn't scared, then I couldn't be courageous. I'd just be reckless. Are, there a lot of, are there a lot of the fighters friendly out of the ring, out of the octagon? Yeah, yeah ma the vast majority of them are. I think about it, the person you're fighting, you have more in common with that person than anyone else in the room because that's why you guys are fighting over something. It's both so important to you both. And it almost bonds you in a way with that person. You think John Jones will be welcome back to the UFC? I don't know. I, I don't know, but I think that him staying active is probably the best thing for him. Free He's time. He's suspended would, indefinitely, right? Yeah, he is. But um, I would like to see him busy as opposed to having a lot of free time on his hands. We'll talk uh, with Ronda Rousey about uh, acting. And we'll be right back. The book is Rousey. I've been saying it's just Rousey. The book is My Fight, Your Fight. And they put the name of the book on the side of the book and not on the front of the book, where titles are supposed to go. <laughs> Why didn't the title go on the front of the book? Uh, I didn't design it. I wanted it, at first I wanted it just to be called My Fight. And then um, there was some debate about it, and so we compromised on My Fight, Your Fight. But and they put it on the side. And it moved to the side. <laughs> A lot of talk about the pay difference between male and female actors. You're in movies now, we'll talk about that in a moment. Do male fighters make more than female fighters? Um, well, I don't know exactly what everyone else's contract looks like, but I think within the next few fights, I'll be in the, the top, I don't know, five or ten money-making money of all time in, in MMA. So 
Um, is I'm there, paid well. <laughs> is there, there, there big money in MMA? Oh, a lot more than, than Olympic judo. <laughs> yeah, well, we're... <laughs> How did you come to get into being in the Expendables with Sly? Um, I just got a call one day that you know, Mr. Stallone, Stallone would like to meet with you, and I had no clue why. And so I, I met with him one day, him and um, his uh, producer, I think it was Kevin King, and me and, and my manager, and I mean, me and my, my agent, Brad. And I think we just had one meal, and he, I had no idea what it was about. He, and he brought up Expendables, would you be interested? And I said, of course, and he wanted to meet again, just me and him, I think, to, to make sure that I wasn't crazy. So I wouldn't have like a babysitter that, to kick me under the table if I was about to say something nuts. And um, then I met with him one more time after that just to read lines with him. So he already gave me the part before I even read lines. And then he took me, uh, you, we were about to leave, he took me into his office and like gave me some lines. And um, he was standing around and like yelling and doing all these different things, giving me acting 101. And he had faith in me from the very beginning, even with zero experience. He's a great guy. He really is. I like Sly. Got a nice wife, good family. Yeah, a lot yeah, of fun. Incredible. Did uh, you take to acting right away? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it, and um, I was kind of, I was going through a little bit of a stressful time in MMA. I just finished doing the Ultimate Fighter, which was a really bad experience for me. Why? Just because I felt really disrespected and trapped in a situation I couldn't get out of, and. Um, Acting really provided an escape for me when I really needed it. Did you get over that now? Did I get over what? Whatever the problem was. Yeah, I got over it. I, I made a couple of movies and beat up some chicks. And it makes me happy. <laughs> 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 I don't think I could get over anything. <laughs> now tell me about your part in Entourage. I'm me. I'm myself. You play yourself. Yeah, and it's my first like not action movie, so I can't really lean on the physical side. It's more comedy, little romantic comedy. It's different. You have fun doing it? So much fun. Oh, I can't. I hope they make another one. I really do. You like acting? I do. And I think it enabled me to, to even fight longer because if I'm going from camp to camp to camp, I mean, it's, it's stressful. It's really stressful. Um, fighting and it just offers a little bit of a reprieve in the middle that makes me miss it. I filmed Expendables in, in Fury 7 and I, I couldn't wait to get back into camp. And I'm gonna do a couple fights in a row and I'm already looking forward to doing my next movie. And But fighting will end, you know. The I know. Eventually. Athletes, the cheering stops. <laughs> do you want to be an actress after that? I mean, yeah. full time? Yeah, I do. But I don't want to be starting from zero like I had to between judo and MMA. I learned that lesson. I want to stop, when, when it comes to time I can't fight anymore, I want to start acting full time right away. Has WrestleMania come to you? WWE, our friends over there. Uh, well, I got to show up and do a cool little thing at the last WrestleMania. What'd you do? I had a little bit of a confrontation with Stephanie McMahon and Triple H and Rock helped me out to, to bring fought? me in. I, yeah. Well, I had a confrontation. <laughs> they all stage these things. Yeah, but it didn't go perfectly to plan either. I ended up having to make up a throw that I never did before on the spot. And um, Stephanie, even with, between me and her, didn't really go according to plan. Would you ever want to wrestle? Yeah, I love it. Oh, it was so cool. At 77,000 people losing their minds. And the WWE said, come be a professional wrestler for a while. Would you do that? If I could fit it in, but I wouldn't give up anything else for it. I, I, but I think I can do everything at once. Why not? What do you enjoy most about MMA? What do I enjoy most? From the moment after I win for like the next week after. And I, I just float. Like nothing, everything is okay. There's nothing that needs to get done. I've, I've done my bit that I need to do and it's just earned rest. A lot of people rest their whole lives and they enjoy it just fine, but that, that week of earned rest is what I really love. And that moment after I defend my belt, it's like I, I get a little piece of that Olympic gold that I missed out on. And I just get a, a chance to, to make up for it every time I get in there. You're gonna fight in August. When do you go into training? Well, I'm always in training. Like I trained this morning. But I'm officially in camp, I think, on the 7th um, of June. 
when you get down to Brazil? I think like 10 days before, like a week and a half before. Rhonda will answer some of your social media questions. We'll play a little game of you, if you only knew. My Fight, Your Fight is the book. Rhonda Rousey is the guest. We'll be right back. The book, My Fight, Your Fight, Ronda Rousey made the front cover of Sports Illustrated as the world's most dominant athlete. She is quite a lady. Are you dating anyone? No, not at the moment. Okay, we have some social media questions for you. Kyle Martin from our blog. Growing up, was there a woman athlete that inspired you? Yeah, my mom. My mom, but I did, um, I did read Billie Jean King's biography uh, in the girl. seventh grade. Yeah. She's a great lady. She seems like it. George Huzal wants to know, if you were told you could go back in time and win the gold medal in judo, but your first MMA fight would be a loss, would you take the gold for a loss? No, I wouldn't. It was meant to go exactly the way it went. Ninja Cowgirl 99 on Twitter, what's the best pep talk you've ever received before a fight and from whom? Uh, my mom. My mom gave me the best pep talk before um, the 2004 Olympic trials. And I was 17 years old and about to go out there. And I found out later that my mom was secretly mic'd and being filmed. And I remember being mad at her. I was mad at her that, that she let someone else see that moment because it was so intimate that I felt embarrassed because I'm all pumped up and she's telling me how I deserve to beat everybody and I'm slapping myself in the face and I'm, I'm getting all ready. And um, then I went out there and I did it. And uh, yeah, I'm actually so happy now that we have that on film. Does uh, she go to all your fights? Yeah, she does. Jack McCracken on our Larry King Now blog. Which UFC fighter do you enjoy watching compete? My favorites? Mm. I love watching John Jones fight. I love watching Jose Aldo. And my favorite match ever, which a lot of people will disagree with, but I love this one, was um, Mighty Mouse versus Dominic Cruz. Because before they added the 25-pound um, division, Dominic Cruz was the 35 champ, and Mighty Mouse was 20, uh, ends up being the 25-pound champ later. So it was like a super fight before they even added the other division, and it just looked like the Who most... Won? Dominic Cruz won a decision, but it was the most ninja backflip stuff that i ever seen in my life, and I was so impressed. And other people were like, oh, that was a boring fight. And I'm like, you don't know what you were watching. And technically, it was amazing. So anyone could be good. Arturo from our blog, what part of your journey has been even better than you imagined? Ooh. That's hard. Um, buying a house. Really? I never thought I would care. I was always the type that would rent an apartment and just throw knives at the wall and be like, whatever, I ain't getting my deposit back. And just, I, I finally, when I got a house, I didn't realize how much it meant to me until the first earthquake when I was in it. And I woke up out of sleep and I'm like, oh no, my house! And I never thought of that before that I would actually care <laughs> about something. Like an, like an actual inanimate thing, and um, now it's become, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna put vertical gardens here and all this stuff, I can feel myself nesting. It's such a lady, girly thing that I never thought I'd be into. Do you live near your mom? Yeah, yeah, she's like on the border of Santa Monica and Venice, and I'm in Venice. We'll play a quick game of You Only Knew. I just throw some question at you. Okay. Who's the first boy you kissed? Ooh, uh, his name was uh, Emmanuel. His name was Emmanuel, and it was like a... How old were you? Oh, man. Was I in the, was I in the sixth, seventh grade? I was in the seventh grade. In California? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, it was more like we had to, he, him and his, his brothers, Darren and Emmanuel, his two t twin brothers from um, Bulgaria. I remember. <laughs> they were both from Bulgaria. They were so cute. And um, they were like the boys that hung out with our group. And then I found out at one like of our friend's birthday party that he had a crush on me. So, so we we went out for 24 hours, and I gave him a kiss. <laughs> you ever find out what happened to him? No, I don't. I just know him and his brother got really, really tall. <laughs> <laughs> What's a superpower you'd love to have? I would want to be Jean Grey as Phoenix, but not crazy. Someone you'd love to face in the octagon. Uh, well, Betch Coea on August 1st. That's what matters. Favorite city to fight in? Mmm. Well, my favorite so far has been um, at the Staples Center, just at home, because it, 
it was really special doing it in my own backyard. I would drive past the Staples Center every day on the way to the gym and point at my own billboard and be like, she's going to die. I would do that every day while I was driving. But, um, in, you know, in a nice, respectful way. How long I was her. that fight? How long was it? 14 seconds. If you were in the WWE, what would your name be? Well, Rowdy. Oh. From Rowdy Rowdy Piper. That's where it comes from. Music you listen to working out. Hector Laveau. Favorite movie besides the arm bar? Favorite move, rather, besides the arm bar? Ooh. Uh, well, I would say an Uchimata. Favorite rough. fight scene of yours in a movie? Ooh. Well, there's the Roddy Roddy Piper in They're Alive, which that was like the longest fight scene ever. I thought it was very cool. And then pretty much all of the raid and Ungbok. <laughs> you have a pet peeve. People that pick at their feet. Like, I, oh, yeah. I don't I, know I why. I like that either. And I do a lot of, like, barefoot stuff, and so someone's, like, picking at their feet, and then I try to, like, grab my gi. I'm like, ooh, feet hands. Like, I don't know. You're a delight, Rhonda. Thank you so much. Don't mess around with me, Rhonda. Okay. Don't, don't <laughs> mess around. Rhonda Rousey, my special guest. Make sure you go buy her book, My Fight, Your Fight. It's in stores now, and you can see her in Entourage. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at KingsThings. I'll see you next time.